The image on the screen is a painting by Van Eyck. On the left we see a crucifixion and on the right a last judgment. Van Eyck was one of the most famous painters in all of Europe during the 15th century. He made this picture around 1430. He was active mainly in the city of Bruges, where he was court painter to the Dukes of Burgundy, rulers of the Netherlands, and one of the most wealthy and powerful families in Europe. Van Eyck's art is characterized by its meticulous realism. Look at the picture on the screen. It shows how he concentrated on looking carefully at things around him, maybe more than any other artist before him did, and on representing what he saw in the most detailed way possible. It is this very strong realistic vocation that makes Van Eyck modern for his time. The careful visual exploration of all things was a part of the emerging modern mindset. By looking and representing things realistically, artists felt like they were conquering the world. We can appreciate better on a screen the meticulous attention to detail that is typical of this artist in this picture which is small. It measures 56 centimeters in height and each panel 20 centimeters in width. It is probably a diptych even though we're not sure that the painting always had this format that it has now. It was made for someone to pray and to meditate. It was small enough that it could be moved around and taken on the road if traveling. The luster of the paint surface is characteristic of oil paint, as used in Netherlandish painting. The frames are original. This is unusual. They're inscribed with text in Latin from the Bible and the Gospels that relate to the scenes painted inside. Notice here the extraordinary attention to detail. The picture needs to be seen very close up. Look, for example, at the mountains in the background, painted in tiny strokes, very likely inspired by knowledge of the awesome high peaks of the Alps, which Van Eyck probably crossed on a trip that we think he took to Italy, where his art would become well known with time. Look also at the spear that pierces the side of Christ, and just below, at the sponge with vinegar that was said to have been offered to him to quench his thirst. Look also at the expressions of the horses. Some seem fearful of the crowds. There's one, just next to the foot of the cross, with an attitude that seems to echo the mocking fury of the mob. Some of the laughing figures in the crowd, such as the man in yellow near the bottom of this image, show large noses that were likely meant to be identified as Jewish, promoting a negative stereotype of a people that were often associated at the time with the killing of Jesus. Art was often used as propaganda by those who paid for it. They used it to express their views and beliefs and to oppose others. Below the crucifixion is Mary, dressed in blue, and a group of followers of Jesus, including the young Saint John and the weeping Mary Magdalene. John consoles the Virgin. He wrinkles his forehead and brings his eyebrows together expressing his spiritual pain. Intensity of expression is typical of Van Eyck and of other Netherlandish artists. Generally speaking, we can say that Netherlandish artists prefer intensity of expression over ideal beauty, which is more typical of Italian artists of this time. Look at Mary Magdalene, dressed in green. She extends her arms forward, her hands joined. The position of the arms seems a bit artificial. What the artist is doing here is searching for a way to communicate emotions through the movement of the body. It is likely that Van Eyck was inspired in this pose by another artist who we will see soon in this course, Roger van der Weyden. Above the head of Mary Magdalene, notice the reflection on the round shield that hangs from the belt and sword of a soldier. In painting such minute details, Van Eyck is showing off his skill. The shield is like a mirror. Something is reflected on it, probably our own presence looking at the painting. This idea of incorporating viewers into the painting by including their reflection in a mirror was used by several Netherlandish artists at the time. And it's repeated by Van Eyck in one of his most famous paintings, the Arnolfini portrait. Look for it, it's in the National Gallery in London. 
Van Eyck very probably worked at times making miniature illustrations for manuscript books that were collected as luxury items by wealthy patrons at the time. This art form is known as manuscript illumination. It was practiced by leading artists, especially in Northern Europe. The taste for nearly microscopic detail was inherited from this tradition of illustration in very small detail. At the top of the right panel is an image of heaven. Below the Virgin and Christ are the twelve apostles dressed in white and those who have been saved at Judgment Day. One of the apostles is Judas, who is said to have betrayed Christ. Van Eyck identifies him through his expression. Try to find him. On the lower part of the left panel is an absolutely amazing scene. A skeleton that represents death seems to act as a funnel through which sinners fall into hell. They are received there by monsters that eat them and destroy them. Some of the images are gruesome. Around mid-height on the left side is an example of this. A man is being split in half by a monster who pulls his legs apart. You may be thinking that this is not very realistic. And you're right. But think about it this way. Even when representing images that seem to come from dreams or nightmares, or just from the fantasy of the artist, there's a realistic vocation here. The details of the monsters are meticulous. They are presented to us not as abstractions, but as if they existed. And look at the landscape just above the skeleton. The artist has worried about painting the waves of the ocean washing onto the shore, and also the distant horizon. Again, a realistic impulse is at work here. The message is similar to that found in Christian art before the Renaissance, but the way it is conveyed, the form that it takes, is modern. <laughs> 